Let's see if we can find the increasing and decreasing intervals for a trig function. Keep in the back of your mind that we are restricting ourselves to the interval between 0 and 2 pi. The steps are the same. Start by finding the derivative, h prime. This is going to be the chain rule. So the outer function is cosine. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. But then we have the inner function of x over 2. So we must multiply by the derivative of the inner function, which will be 1 half. So just writing this in an order with which I am more comfortable, I will have negative 1 half sine of x over 2. So there's my derivative. Next we need to find the critical numbers. Since there are no values that cause sine to be undefined, we can focus on where h prime is equal to 0. Setting the derivative equal to 0, we have negative 1 half sine of x over 2 equals 0. If we multiply both sides by negative 2, the uh, negative 1 half will cancel out. We get sine of x over 2 equals 0. So let's solve this for x over 2, just like we might solve this for theta. If there was a theta in there, we'd have theta equals whatever we get. But there's an x over 2 in there, so that means we will have x over 2 equals whatever we get. So where is sine equal to 0? Looking at the unit circle and remembering that sine is the y value on the unit circle, the y value will be 0 here and here. But remember, for this problem, we are limited to the interval uh, between 0 and 2 pi. And because there are no equal to signs, this is not less than or equal to, that means neither 0 nor 2 pi are to be included. So that means you can forget about this point right here where uh, 0 and 2 pi would be. So that just leaves us this one over here on the far left, which of course is pi. So we have x over 2 is equal to pi. Multiplying both sides by 2, we get x is equal to 2 pi. But wait, we just said that 2 pi is out of bounds. We have to stay less than 2 pi, not equal to 2 pi. That means there are actually no critical numbers uh, between 0 and 2 pi. So what do we do? Well, I'm still going to make a sign chart, but there's just only one interval to test, and it is actually the given interval uh, from 0 to 2 pi. So, for the first factor of negative 1 half, that is definitely going to be negative. But what about for sine of x over 2? Imagine a value that is between 0 and 2 pi. For example, a nice one to pick might be pi. So, if I were to plug in pi right here, uh, maybe I'll do this off to the side we would have sine of pi over 2 if I put pi in where the x goes. But what is the value of this? Well, the sine of pi over 2 um, is going to come from this position right here. This is where pi over 2 is, and sine is the y value, so this will equal 1. What really matters is that this is positive. So, at a value of pi, we will have a negative times a positive, which is a negative. Because h prime is negative, we know that the original function is going to be decreasing on this entire interval. We would summarize our answer by saying h of x is decreasing from 0 to 2 pi because h prime is negative. Let's do one more again with a trig function. We will start off by finding the derivative. 
we're going to have to do the chain rule because uh, the squared part is the outer function. If I put that in the front, that leaves sine x as the inner function. And the chain rule says I need to now multiply by the derivative of that inner function. Derivative of sine is cosine. And then moving over to the second term, um, well, again, the derivative of sine is cosine. So I will have cosine x here. So this is the derivative. Let's go ahead and factor this, which will help us uh, find our critical numbers later. I see that we have cosine x as a common factor. So I'm going to pull cosine x out in front of the parentheses. That will leave me with 2 sine x plus 1. There are no values of x that will cause this to be undefined. So our only critical numbers will happen when f prime is equal to 0. So let's go ahead and set this equal to 0 and solve. Looking at the first factor, um, if we set cosine x equals 0, um, that will give us a critical number. And if we set 2 sine x plus 1 equal to 0, that will give us another critical number. So where is cosine equal to 0? Cosine is the x value on the unit circle. And the x value will be 0 here and here. So that means x is equal to pi over 2. That's up there at the top. And x is equal to 3 pi over 2 down here at the bottom. 2 sine x plus 1 equals 0. Subtracting 1 and dividing by 2 gives us sine x is equal to negative 1 half. So the sine of what? x value will equal negative one half. Actually forget the negative for a second. We can find the reference angle by asking ourselves the sine of what angle will equal one half. Hopefully you've memorized that the sine of pi over six is equal to one half. That tells us that the reference angle is pi over six, uh, but understand there are four angles on the unit circle that have a reference angle of pi over 6. There's one in every quadrant. The sine of any of these angles will give me some kind of 1 half. It's just that two of them will give me positive 1 half and two of them will give me negative 1 half. So in which quadrants will the sine function be negative? Sine is a y value. So it's going to be negative in the third quadrant and the fourth quadrant. So these are the two solutions. Um, reference angle of pi over 6. Um, over here on the left, this pi is, is like 6 pi over 6. So I will think of this as 7 pi over 6. Uh, all the way back around, this would be 12 pi over 6. So I know this is 11 pi over 6. So those are my two solutions here. x equals 7 pi over 6. x equals 11 pi over 6. So we have four critical numbers. Here, 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 and here. So here are my four critical numbers in order on the number line, all ready for me to make the sign chart. Since we are only considering the overall interval from 0 to 2 pi, I will go ahead and uh, put 0 at the very beginning and 2 pi at the very end. I'm going to need two rows, one row for each factor of my derivative. Let's start with the factor of cosine x. Let's find the sine of cosine x in each of these little intervals. Uh, between 0 and pi over 2, cosine is positive. In the back of our minds, we are remembering that cosine is the x value. So to the right 
of the y-axis, it's going to be positive. But then as we cross past pi over 2, um, cosine is going to be negative over here on the left. So between pi over 2 and 7 pi over 6, cosine will be negative. Um, between 7 pi over 6 and 3 pi over 2, we are still on the left-hand side. So x values are still negative. Beyond 3 pi over 2, we are getting into the positive zone. X values are positive uh, to the right, and they continue to be positive uh, to the right of, uh, well, beyond 11 pi over 6. We're still on the right-hand side. I'm going to take a little bit of a shortcut on the 2 sine x plus 1 factor because I don't feel like checking each one of these five intervals on this expression. Remember that we set 2 sine x plus 1 equal to 0, and we got the 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. So these are the two places where uh, this factor will go from positive to negative or from negative to positive. So all we have to do is check one value, for example, in this interval, and it should be the same this whole way. A good value to test might be pi. So if we substitute in pi, we'd have 2 sine pi plus 1. But the sine of pi is 0. So this is really 0 plus 1, which gives you positive 1. That means the factor of 2 sine x plus 1 is going to be positive in all of these yellow intervals. That includes the interval from 0 to pi over 2, so that's going to be positive. But it also includes the interval from pi over 2 to 7 pi over 6, so that's going to be positive. All right, and then here at the end, between 11 pi over 6 and 2 pi, that's in there. So that's over here, between 11 pi over 6 and 2 pi. So by checking that one value, we really cover all three of these. Um, now, by extension, because it, it's going to go from a positive to negative when we cross over this line, we really know that it's going to be negative in these two, all right? It, it hits 0 at um, 7 pi over 6. It's going to go negative when we go past that. Uh, if you really wanted to be sure, you could go ahead and test, uh, for example, 3 pi over 2 you could use as a test value. So you could do 2 sine 3 pi over 2 plus 1. But the sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. So this would be 2 times negative 1 plus 1, which would be negative 2 plus 1, which would be negative. So like we thought, it's going to be negative in these two intervals. So now let's come up with the overall sign for each interval. Well, I see a positive times a positive, so that'll be positive. Positive times a negative is a negative. A negative times a negative is a positive. Positive times a negative is a negative, and a positive times a positive is a positive. We know that the original function will be increasing when the derivative is positive. So it'll be increasing in this interval, in this interval, and in this interval. The original function will be decreasing when the derivative is negative. So it will be decreasing in this interval and this interval. Let's go ahead and summarize our final answer. So here we go. f of x is increasing from 0 to pi over 2 and 7 pi over 6 to 3 pi over 2 and 11 pi over 6 to 2 pi because f prime is positive. Also, f of x is decreasing from pi over 2 to 7 pi over 6 and from 3 pi over 2 to 11 pi over 6 because f prime is negative.